Okay, this was from uh, Gallietti and Jobiet in uh, 1958. They did a study with it anyway. Uh, this is a remarkable, remarkable fact, particularly considering that the rampant increasing problem with hypothyroidism in the United States. That's right. Things are changing. You know, okay. Uh, the second most prescribed drug of the year was synothyroid. Hey, who's making money on this? Think about it. We put something in the water that forces you to buy a product from us. Sharon residents, everybody out there, ask questions. Remember, asbestos was good. Oh, yeah, it's the best thing for you. Cigarettes, hey, you know. Come on, lead in your gas. It took people, hopefully not like me, but like you, to do something and to change this. Okay? So anyway, hmm. Cinero, which is, uh, we left off with synothyroid, okay, which is a hormone replacement drug used to treat an underactive thyroid. Now, in Russia, Richard Brzezinski in 1985 found a lowering of thyroid function among otherwise healthy people at 2.3 parts per million fluoride in water. Now, once again, we put it in the water, plus now it's in all of our food products, okay? And gee, all of a sudden they're saying this causes thyroid problems. And yet we continue to spend our tax money, instead of on our children helping them, pumping toxins into our water. You have to stop this. Okay, anyway. Some of the early symptoms of skeletal fluorosis, I can go into that, you know, mimic symptoms of arthritis. Okay, this is from, let's see, Frank in 75 did studies, Singh in 63. I could go over the studies and names, but you know what? Ask me for it, we'll send you info, okay? Um, in some studies, high doses of fluoride, average of 26 milligrams per day, were used in trials to treat patients with osteoporosis in an effort to harden their bones and reduce fracture rates. It actually led to higher number of fractures, okay? So it didn't, you know, boy, it's, it's, it was supposedly going to be the treatment for bones. They stopped doing it, yet we continue to pump it in our water and to tell you it's good for your teeth, okay? Nineteen studies, okay, three unpublished, including one abstract, okay, since 1990 have examined the possible relationship of fluoride and water, hip fracturing. We went into, you know, government-sanctioned animal study and fluoride causes cancer. Oh, that's right. That's Harvard recently with young men. Hey, how many young men in Sharon, okay, need to get cancer or need to be told by Harvard that it's linked to bone cancer, yet you're going to continue to pay to put it in your water. Are you upset yet? Wake up, folks. Okay, um, National Cancer Data in 83, okay, you know, revealed the significantly higher rate of bone cancer in young men. Yeah, that's, you know, I already told you that. This was done by Cohen in 1992. Hoover in 91 did this, okay. All right, fluoride administered to animals in high doses wreaks havoc to the male productive system. You know, how many of you guys out there need your Viagra? I'm just kidding. I'm not going to link that one. Okay, fluoridation program has been very poorly monitored. Oh, yeah, we don't care. Everybody who, anybody like myself who might ask a question and or do research, okay, I've got to be the kook on your TV because I'm telling you, something's not right. Okay, Florida, oh, this one, this bothers me. You've seen my other shows where I believe liberty is important, freedom of speech is important, okay, the right to keep bear arms, the whole Bill of Rights, the Constitution. I'm big on all that stuff. This one bothers me. When I look at it and I say, fluoridation, it's unethical. I don't know of any doctor, once again, who would prescribe treatment for someone they never knew, never had any history on, didn't follow up with them to see if there was any adverse reactions to taking it, yet we're pumping a toxin in our water. Which doctor out there in my audience wants to come and sit beside me and tell me that that's the right thing to do? Okay, let's just put stuff in our water and not care who the heck consumes it. What if diabetics, someone who has to drink a lot of water is out there and they're consuming it? How many, what's the, oh, don't even get me going on the whole diabetes, anyway. As one doctor aptly stated, no physician in his right senses would prescribe for a person he has never met, whose medical history he does not know, a substance which is intended to create bodily change with the advice Take this as much as you like, but you will take it for the rest of your life because some children suffer from tooth decay. And I'm getting close here, so we're going to have to, I'm going to blow through. We'll pick out some of the highlights. Yeah, gee, you know, according to the Agency for Toxic Substances and Disease Registry, oh, should I go into, you know, certain, substance, certain subsets of the population are susceptible to it? All right, how about, okay, dental decay, we covered that. You know, studies, U.S. Public Health Service first enjoys fluoridation in 1950 before one single trial had been completed. How do you like that, huh? So all you dentists out there who said, well, well, since way back when, since the 50s, this is great. They approved it before they even saw if it had any effects on people. i got to wrap this up for you, though. Um, 
some of the earliest opponents of fluoridation were biochemists and at least 14 Nobel Prize winners. Okay? Among the numerous scientists who have expressed their reservations about the practice of fluoridation. All right, so I mean, get me a Nobel Prize winner to sit beside me and tell me it's the best thing since sliced bread. Uh, recent Nobel laureate in medicine won the, um, I want to say his name was Arvid Carlson, the doctor, won the Nobel Prize in 2000. You know, what's his quote here? It's, um, I am quite convinced that water fluoridation in the not too distant future will be consigned to medical history. Water fluoridation goes against the leading principles of pharmacology or whatever, since the progressing of the stereotypical, medi uh, excuse me, stereotyped medication of the type one and three tablets a day. It's funny, you know, the addition, you know, to drugs, to drinking water means exactly the opposite of individualized therapy. There's so much more I want to give you. The un last one I'm going to end you with, and I'm going to close the show with this one, just so you know how I close the show, so you can go look up yourself. But the union representing the scientists at the United States Environment Protection Agency. That's right, you know, like you got the workers' union. Well, you got a science un scientist union. Headquarters in Washington, D.C. is now on record as opposing water fluoridation. Okay? That was Hersey in 1999, came up there. Anyway, according to the union's senior vice president, Dr. William Hersey. Okay, in summary, we hold that water fluoridation is an unreasonable risk. That is, that the toxicity of fluoride is so great and that the purported benefits associated with it are so small, there, if there are any at all, because they've found out that even the ones they say they have aren't what they say, okay, that requiring every man, woman, and child in America to ingest it borders on criminal behavior on the part of the government. Folks, this is your water, it's your children, it's your family. Think. You're paying to do it. So anyway, that's how I'm ending this show. Hopefully you enjoyed it. This was the real story, one of my fluoride shows. Hopefully we'll come back and we'll hopefully enlighten you with other information. Because remember, asbestos was good. Yeah, I forgot. Leaded gas was the best thing since sliced bread. Mesophilioma, I mean, folks, come on. It's up to you to get off your couches, get off your chairs, talk to your neighbors, okay, and stop making the people around you sick. Get up and do something. So with that, have a great day, and thanks for watching.